Hallelujah. I know I'm excited about being in the house of the Lord. And I came in with a praise this morning, with a praise. And the honest thing, I say, I just want to praise him forever and ever and ever for all, all you've done for me. Come on, come on. I just want to praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know if you just tune in and you're watching, you're watching New Life Christian Fellowship at 1321 Providence Road here in Brandon, Florida. And I am Minister T. I don't always say that, but I'm just excited about being in the house of the Lord this morning. And even as I stepped in, you know, when you step into the house of the Lord, you're always ready to receive. Amen. And I know even as I came in and I was ready to receive all, you know, when things, somebody said, oh, I got some good news. I said, I just want to praise him now. So right now, you just ought to just raise your hand and say, I just want to praise him. Because everybody got something to praise him for this morning. I just want to praise him. You see, I can say that I want to just want to praise him for life this morning. But see, you got something different that you want to praise him for. Say, I just want to praise him. You see, you may say, ooh. He woke me up this morning and he, he's got me in my right mind. You say, I just want to praise him. You know, uh, as the old folks, and I do remember, and I'm kind of mature up in age right now, said, but he gave me the activities of my limb. I just want to praise him. Hallelujah. You know, so many of us, we got children there in school, and they are wayward, and they don't always do the things that we want to do. We say, oh, Lord, I just want to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. You know, even though sometimes we begin to say, look up in our pockets, and stuff ain't where it was supposed to be. And all of a sudden, something come up, and you go, I just want to praise him this morning. And then even though you began this to look all around you and you see things are going well and you go, I just want to praise him this morning. And then, you know, sometimes stuff don't always go the way you plan, but because you trust God, you go, I just want to praise him this morning. And then, you, you, I, I, listen, I looked over there at Chantel. Let me tell you something. I had a rough week. I really did. Rough week. Nobody knows it. Didn't tell nobody. So I got up yesterday morning, and when I got up yesterday morning, I was so sad. I was so sad, and it's the truth. But you know what I say? I just want to praise it. And you know, as I began this to praise him, I got a text. And somebody texted me and said, T, you on my mind this morning. Say, you on my mind this morning. And I went, Lord, I'm on somebody's mind. He said, yeah. Well, and then I said, I just want to praise him. And you know one thing? She said, just give me a call. She said, we can pray together. I called my sister, got on the line, and she and I, she just started praying for me on yesterday. And after she prayed for me, you know what I did? I just I got up. It's the truth. You know I can't lie in the church, y'all. It's the truth. I got up and I just started praising him. That's where I got that from this morning. I'm here to praise God this morning. Because whatever has been going on up in your life, not Monday, not Tuesday, not Wednesday, not Thursday, not Friday, but today. If today, if you just give him some praise, come on, start praising. You know what you need to be praising him for. This ain't no testimony. This is where we come in and we invite the presence of the Lord because we want to praise him. We want to give him some praise this morning. I just want to praise him. Come on. I just want to praise him. Oh, come on. Forever. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. And ever. Come on. For all you've done for me. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory. And honor. We all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless me. I want to praise you. 
scripture reading comes to you today and it says, Ooh. It's all right. <laughs> yes. You know, that the, the, there is, it says, if I had 10,000 tongues this morning, you see, that's not a cliche. As they would say, you don't know my story. Say that. Say it. You don't know my story. My, my, my. Nobody knows my story but me. Hallelujah. And God this morning. But I just want you all to know I'm excited about being in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. I'm excited about being around people who love me, oh God. People who care about me, oh God. But most of all, God is a God who will make the impossible possible. Say that, Sister T. And I'm one of those <laughs> persons. Say that. He has made the impossible oh, that's possible right. up in my life this morning. Let me give y'all something to clap about this morning. Yeah, I got a new house. <laughs> he can do anything. You know why? Because see, y'all love me. Y'all know I've been praying for this for a thousand years. <laughs> and I ain't even been living that long. But I can tell you this. God has really blessed me. And I'm telling you, not just with a new home, y'all. Let me tell you. Y'all know I be liking stuff over the top. Over the top? <laughs> over the top. Way over the Listen, top. Six bedrooms, four baths. You better two stop. Five garage, <laughs> all the trimming. Come on, y'all stop oh, shouting. You stop it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey. Come on. Hey. Almost 10 years since I've been praying for a house. I don't y'all know. Why am I? But it seemed like forever in a day. Because when I got my car first, y'all was just, ooh, look at this and see. I said, but wait a minute, how am I going to get my car first and not get my house? But you know one thing I was told, sometimes you have to put the, what is it, the cart, the horse before the cart. Well, then that's what I did. <laughs> and I went and got the car. And yeah. let me tell you something. Yeah. And now got the house. Yeah. And I, the first people I wanted to know was my church family. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm excited this morning. I'm excited. <laughs> Chantel told me yesterday, girl, you don't have no business being stressed. Get your butt up out that bed and get to work. That's what she told me yesterday. Get up. Are you crazy? Get up. She said, that is not the sister T that I know. She said, so that's sister T. I know she be running all over that place. All just right. be crying. I said, but guess what? I didn't run yesterday, but I get the opportunity you to run, run now. in this house. In this house. You see, that one is there. But in this house. Because this house is the house that blessed me. Hallelujah. Okay, now I'm going to get to my scripture. I ain't got to it yet. You're still watching New Life Christian Fellowship at 1321. Hey!
going to say this one last thing. Some of you don't know my health condition. And I'm saying, God, how am I going to move around all this house that you done blessed me with? He said, T. He said, go have surgery and I'm going to bless your body. He said, I said, come on now. I got that confirmation. Wait a minute. Y'all, let me tell you. For those of you who I have been talking to, y'all know I hate surgery. And I'd have made it up in my mind. I got that confirmation. I got the confirmation in my house. Yes. you brought me to oh God because I was one of your people one of your people oh God it says I need a bomb and even with the psalmist that we've heard it's right here in the scripture oh God whatever it is that you need God has a bomb for it whether you need healing there's a bomb in Gilead whether you need finances there's a bomb in Gilead whether you're sick, there's a bomb in Gilead. Whether you need healing, there's a bomb in Gilead. Whatever it is that you need up in your life, oh God, there's a bomb in Gilead. And if you right now will begin just to let God begin just to work upon your heart right now, knowing that you come in here not individually, but corporately stating, Oh, God, there's a bomb in Gilead just for me. But he's ready as to give it to you right now. As I spoke with my sister earlier, oh, God, we began this to thank you for everything that you've done for us, oh, God, right now. In the name of Jesus, we were reminded that you said that if you would just trust me, we know that we haphazardly do things day by day, but your word tells us, sister, seek you for those things. And we sometimes take it casually where your word tells us is to ask. It may not be in our time, oh God, but it's in your time. We thank you this morning as you are beginning this to speak with us. And your presence is here with us. It's because we are praying and we are thanking you, God. For all the wonderful things that you've done up in our lives, dear oh God. We know that there is still yet more to come, oh God. So we are here this morning because we thank you, oh God. We love you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you're going to bless this service this morning. In the name of Jesus this morning. You're going to bless every individual who's lifting up their hand this morning and says, I just want to praise you this morning. And we thank Thank you, oh God, that you would do it just for them. Even as I began this to speak right now, oh God, you're speaking to somebody's heart right now. Let them receive from you right now. In the name of Jesus, whatever that bomb is that they need this morning, oh God, touch them right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And even as the service began this to start, oh God, we ask you just to bless our pastor this morning. Bless him, his wife, his family. Bless our musicians, oh Oh God, them and their families, oh God. Bless our, our minstrels of music and, and even our, our, our song, th those who are singing this morning. Bless them and their families this morning, oh God. In the name of Jesus, even as our ushers who are greeting your people as they come into the house of the Lord. Bless them and their families this morning.
morning right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Even our people who are back there that's working with our youth this morning, oh God. We ask you to bless them right where they are, oh God. And their families, oh God. In the name of Jesus this morning. Because we can stand here oh, corporately Mama. this morning and say, there is a bomb in Gilead. Oh, Lord. And whatever you need this morning. Even your sin sick soul, he can do it just Jesus. for you this morning. But when it's all said and done, oh God, when it's all said and oh done, my oh God, my. we want to give you glory oh and we Jesus. want to please you. In Jesus' oh magnificent name, we love you this glory, morning. Glory. We praise you this morning. We know, we say it so many times, we love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, oh God, amen, amen, and amen. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Listen, who wouldn't serve a God like this? The God we serve, he will blow your mind. He can do anything. I heard a sister, my sister came over and said, hey, uh, he's done more than we could ever expect it. Amen. How many were blessed by that testimony on this morning? That's the kind of God that we serve. He can do more than we can ever expect. What we can ever imagine or think. He can do anything. The key of A. That's the kind of God we serve. This is what he'll do. Blow my mind. Blow my mind. <laughs> Blow my mind. T already told you this. He'll do the impossible. Can y'all help me sing? Blow my mind. Say, Blow my mind.
have not heard. Oh, I can imagine what you have in store. Come on, say that with us. Eyes have not seen. God can do anything. How many believe that? God can do anything. Oh, God can do anything. God can do anything. Come on, say that if you believe that with us this morning. God can. God can do anything. It, Carla. Oh, I know we can. God can. God can do anything. Oh, yes, He can. God can do anything. Come on, won't you raise that? Raise that tonight. Oh, God can do. Say, raise it. God can do anything. Yes, He can. God can do anything. He can make the impossible possible. Somebody say it's Sunday morning. It's Sunday morning. And I'm alive. And, and, and you know what? We didn't get any phone calls last night. Did you get any phone calls? How many know you could have got a phone call between last night and this morning? The, 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 you, you know, the person that you love the most could have stopped breathing. Could have been a, it could have been a few of them. Man, listen, only thing that we know about life that is there's no guarantees to it. Sure enough. You could be young and feel like you got a thousand years left and leave tonight. We ought to be thankful. I said we ought to see, see. the smell 
the, the, the odor comes from, from the lack of appreciating the fact that even though life is not giving you what you desire, you still got 24 hours to change some things. You ain't in jail. You're not on the operating table. Yes, you might be dealing with some debilitating diseases, but between now and that disease, listen, there's a whole lot of things you could do. I'm not giving, so I say I'm not giving in. So I say I'm not giving up. Come on, say I'm not giving in. I'm not giving up. You know, God built, he built us in a way that we should never give in and never give up. Amen. And all of us will get those opportunities to, to uh, challenge the adversities of life. Just wait your turn. Somebody say, just wait. Right, Denise? Just wait. I remember when Sister Hawkins got here, she, was, she came through these doors with Mr. Hawkins. Somebody said, just wait. When they came through the doors, they didn't say, listen, Denise will still be here with Mr. Hawkins. He's going to leave after a while. Somebody said, just wait. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know. I don't know. You don't know. We started pastoring. My son was alive. Guess what? He's gone now. Died when the time, I wish he could have died when it was, things were better, could have had insurance on him, but the, life don't always happen the way you want it to happen. And you know, he died, and, and during the pandemic, he was trying to have a funeral for my son and worrying about catching the disease at the same time. But that's behind me now. I could look unto the hills which, which cometh my help. Because my help still come from above. I might be a little wounded about some of the challenges I've had in life. But I still got joy. And I'm going to give God the praise. Regardless. I said regardless. Of what the day might bring what happened last night or this morning. Do I have a church in here this morning? Do I have a church in here this morning that I will give him a praise regardless? Do you got a regardless, regardless of what's going on in my life, I will still give him You know what that means? That's called growing up. It's called growing up when you could look at your enemy. And say, I appreciate you. Some of us want to go get a gun and kill our enemy. No. You ought to thank God for your enemies and your haters. They help us grow. And they help us realize that there is a God in our lives. Somebody give God a hand praise for your haters. Come on now. Hey, come on. Give him a praise for your haters. Listen, listen. Tomorrow morning when you walk through that door, they're going, listen, they're going to be hot and mad at you. Give God a praise right now for those haters. Because they won't be able to stop what God is going to do for you and through you. Somebody say, yeah. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with a little adversity. Nothing wrong. Good to see some new faces in here. I ain't seen that sister. How you doing, sweetheart? God bless you. And that brother back there. How you doing, man? And brother over there, I met him. Come on, give God a hand praise for the few people we've had come through the door. Amen. I'm excited. I really am excited to be in this house. You know, excited that God has given me an opportunity. Hmm. Somebody said opportunity. opportunity. Of a lifetime. In spite of my flesh wanting to preach to thousands, I'm so thankful for this opportunity. You, you, you know how your flesh could get. Why ain't there more? I, some more should hear me. I'm thankful for this opportunity right here. Somebody say right here. 
And I'm not going to get caught up in what my flesh think I should have. And some of, my, some of my greatest supporters think I should be out there. And you have to be careful to know your place. Somebody say, this is my place. If, you, if you're not worried about catching COVID, give somebody a fist bump and say, I'm in the right place today. Come on, I'm in the right place. Gave me, I'm in the right place. I'm here about this. When the Bible talks about Kairos and Kronos in terms of time and the timing of the Lord, there's a specific time that God will intersect your life with the divine purpose. And I believe it's today. Today. You're not here by accident. Most of us here today have struggled immensely with confidence in our own self. Most of us here today struggled. And it, most of it hadn't been our fault. It's just been the, what we have been incubated in. Most of the things that we've been incubated in didn't know the, the glory and the, and, the, and the significance of what God placed inside of us. And they were not prepared for our birth. They weren't prepared for us, and so we came into a world that was not kind, considerate, and hopeful to us. And we had to make our way, navigate through some very difficult things. Do I have any amens in this place? But, but through it all, I've learned something. You know, if I, I think if I would have had the support and had the, the resources, I don't think I would have the relationship that I have with God that I have today. I would be thanking my mother, my grandfather. I'd be thanking my, my, my lineage. I'd be thanking the banks. I'd be thanking. And it's really God that has me in the position I'm in. He can take somebody broken, put them in the White House. He can take somebody crazy, make them sane, and turn them into a bishop. I wish I had a, somebody say he's able to do what? Exceedingly. abundantly we're all miracles in this building today we get you to remind be mindful of the fact you are miracles you you're standing right in a space that you don't have to be in but god has made you a miracle in spite of all the hell you and adam been through who says where's she i can't see her in the back look at this See, I, I couldn't see in the back. Did, did, see what I'm saying? There's a miracle right there. I, I, I didn't, this is not preempted. I didn't know she was here. But recently she had an auto accident. Almost, uh, the car was totaled. And the wonderful thing, the driver that hit her stayed there to make sure she was all right. One like me, Deacon, I'd have ran from the accident. <laughs> Who hit her? He was black and in a Porsche. <laughs> no. But the guy stayed. And JC said, when you look at the car, it's, 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 it's a miracle that she's alive. She just had... I think knee replacement, hip replacement. You have those kind of major surgeries and have a vehicle accident. And the grace of God was covering her in that vehicle, gave her a miracle. And there she is right back there. Come on and give God some praise for her miracle. The car is gone, but she's still here. How many know God is able to do that? Somebody said, I'm not here by accident this morning. For many years, I'm going to give it back to the praise team, but for many years, for many years, don't start me still, I've had to. Don't, you know you. You know, all it takes is just a little belief in yourself. And most of us, we've grown up without that. That 
that just little push, that little bit of butter, love, whatever it was. We needed, we didn't get it. And so a lot of us, we, we got C's instead of A's. We struggle with finding our place because we just lack the confidence that we needed. And God spoke to me some years ago in, in the book of uh, Judges. He, he gave me hope because he said, you know what? Before you believe in me, I believe in you. I'm standing here today because God believed in me. He, listen, he believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself. I ain't getting no help with my... TT, he believed in you when, when, listen, when you didn't believe in yourself. When, when nobody in Nigeria knew that you were the one. He I wish I had somebody could shout this morning. So I'm glad he believed in me. There was nothing cute about you. In fact, you were the ugliest one in the room, but he believed in you. And it was that belief that made you begin to believe in yourself. The confidence we have is, is not, it's not the kind of confidence that you can break. You can't take it from, it came from God. Somebody say, I'm glad I'm in church this morning. Amen. I just want to exhort you. I, I tell you, I'm excited this morning. I really am. Excited this morning. Come on, if you're able to stand on your feet, you can do so. We're going to clap your hands. We're going to get on out the way. We're going to do this praise song and turn it back into the hands of the bishop. Oh, oh, oh. with us. So how? I'll praise is our God. Sing with me how great you gotta call him. That's is our God. Oh, we'll see how great how great Say, 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 oh, three points. Oh, oh, you got it now. Oh, 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 oh. How great, say, say, how great is our God. Sing with me. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, we'll see. Oh, we'll see. How great. How great. Listen, listen, listen. Say, I lift my hand. I lift my hand. To give you glory. To give you glory. I lift my hand. I lift my hand. To give you praise. To give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Somebody say, yeah. 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 
the song bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me come on don't stop praising him yeah. come on come on get your holy on, on. on get your rock on for the Lord that's it that's it come on come on sing yeah. It's very easy, just repeat after us. Goes like this. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. All that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Say it again. Bless. 
Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. All that is within, within me. me. Come on, y'all. Say all that is within me. All that is within me. Bless his holy name.
up here. You know they say a sight for sore eyes, my eyes don't hurt. You a sight for good eyes. Sight for sore eyes. My eyes ain't sore, you a sight for good eyes. Listen, I am so grateful to God. You know, when I grew up, we went to church, but church wasn't always a part of what we did from Monday to Saturday. We wasn't holy rollers. We did our thing during the week. And so church was in us, but not a whole lot in us. I'm just so thankful today, man. Woo! I can only imagine if, if my if if my music repertoire only consisted of R and B and jazz and fusion. That the, that the only gospel that I would have known would be that old stuff I learned when I was a kid. But I'm so grateful that I've, just like the music has progressed, I have progressed too. And my walk with God has progressed and intensified. And so the songs make me feel good, man. The, the songs that have, that have uh, ushered me from moment to moment, from grace to grace, they have been so much appreciated. We did a song on Wednesday. Remember that old song we did? That old song, um, Captain Spock? He's not Captain Spock, but he's, I forget his name sometimes. That's Dr. Dr. Christopher Johnson. You know, when you start getting old, you forget stuff. Come on. You really do. You all think I'm making jokes. I wanted to say his name, but I just thought okay, Christopher Spock. He didn't know his name. Y'all, guy, you make a good laugh. I know the message. You better be glad I know that. But there was a song that we did on Sunday. Uh, w uh, there's no way I no, not that one. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Yeah, because you know what? Really, really, man. I, m my folks. They try, I guess they wanted to be clean, but they was dirty. My father wasn't married to my mother. Then we found out he had other kids and stuff. So we came from really, a really a troubled background. They, they, listen, education, none of that would have cleaned us up. Money couldn't have cleaned us up. Reparations, the only thing that cleaned us up was that blood. The blood cleaned me up. The blood, 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 the blood. I feel I feel whole because of the blood. I've had all kinds of challenges in my 67 years of living, but good God Almighty, the blood has made me feel like something. I feel value because of the blood. I, I want to remind this is a place where we speak about the blood you would be filthy dirty if that were no blood covering you you ought to give God thanks for that blood you ought to give God thanks for the blood I couldn't preach if it wasn't no real blood <laughs> sure would, couldn't preach. I would be convicted because I know how nasty I've been. I know how broken I've been. I know how detached I've been. I know when I wanted to do good, evil was always present. There's no way anybody could get up here and do what I'm doing unless there was some blood that washed you clean, honey. Clean me up. Clean me up. Clean me up. Clean me up, man. I want to acknowledge that blood this morning by rendering this song. Help us sing it, Sherwood. What, what, what an awesome. Oh, the blood, redeeming blood, Jesus' blood shed oh. for me. Oh, the blood, saving, saving. blood, <laughs> cleansing blood from Calvary. Oh. Come on, 
on, sing with me. Sing. Oh, the blood, redeeming blood, Jesus' blood, shed for me. Oh, the blood, saving blood, cleansing blood from Calvary. Oh, Lamb of God, crucified for my sins in blood and light. And oh, how precious is the blood. Let's do it one more time. Hold the blood, so. Hold the blood, redeeming blood, Jesus' blood, shed for me. Oh, the blood, saving blood, cleansing blood from Calvary. Oh, Lamb of God, crucified, for my sins be blessed and And oh, how precious is the
need their cup filled this morning. Somebody need their cup filled. See, I don't just want to hear you shouting. You need that cup filled. Say, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come on. Somebody say, I need my cup filled. Come on, you know you came here with no full, with no full cup. You need some, you need some oil in your cup this morning. Come on, you need some new oil. You came to get some new wine. Hallelujah. Come on. You got to put a demand on the ass on the anointing of God. Don't you leave oh, it the way yeah. you can. I heard the Lord said you need to lift your cup up. I saw Elder Denise jumping, but some of y'all need to lift your cup up. Lift your cup up. And God will cause blessings to overtake you. And cause your cup to overflow. Lift up your cup. You don't come here and God get you a drink. He that believeth in me. Hallelujah. That the scripture has said out of his belly. of living water come on and get your drink you need a drink hallelujah I was drinking before I got here see ya just give me a course that fill my cup Lord I lift it up, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Your soul needs to be, needs to be quenched. Just Bread Don't play no games. Don't play no games. I want. I want It up and make and me, make me all. All. Fill my cup, Lord. I dare you. I, I dare you. Up, I dare Lord. you. I dare you. Come and quench, quench this thirsting of my soul. Hey, hey, hey.
up, Lord. Come on, to tell him, tell him, tell him. I tell him. Tell him. Tell him. church with her because I wanted to get high My God. and I remember they always would bother me come my I just couldn't wait till 11 o'clock came because when they when 11 o'clock came I go get my liquor and get my they used to bother me all the time mother clock came over there beat I'm getting ready to light up and she beating on the door bang 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 and I'm like bang out of here bang yourself out of here <laughs> She wouldn't leave me alone. I had a jerry curl in them days. My hair was sweating. <laughs> Oil and sweat. And I was nervous. And she came in and grabbed me, picked my little butt up. I don't think I weighed about 150 pounds back then. She said, you going to church? I said, come on, just give me another five minutes inside. She took me to church and I sat there uncomfortable, sweating bullets because the cocaine was in my system. But I was still in church. Can I just testify? You know, sometimes when we, we want people to be saved more than they want to be saved. It's got to be something they want. And as bad as my situation was, I didn't want to be saved then. But they never gave up on me. It wasn't until I got to a place where I realized that my life was really in trouble. That I put a call in to God. He answered me. And my life has not been the same since. It hasn't been the same since. It hasn't been the same since. And, and I, I always am challenged because people are so dear and so wonderful. I love people. And to see that when they come here and you see them hurting but you know they haven't fully converted. They haven't given their all to Christ. This don't work unless you come all the way in. You know, it's just like you let go and let that no good boyfriend and you start trusting somebody that you know shouldn't be trusted. But God can be trusted. He's not a no good girlfriend or a no good boyfriend or a job that would promise you in 20 years you get a watch and a gold key, and when 20 years is up, you're giving your walking papers. He is faithful. Somebody say, he is faithful. And, and this morning, I want to speak to you in respect to the, to the fidelity of God. I'm a young, I say young in a sense that my mind is still young, but I'm still, I'm a, I'm a young, hopeful black man that that I really believe that the best of my life is still yet before me. I say that at 67 years old, that the best of my life is yet before me. And I, I say that because of, of who I believe in. And because I believe in him, he made me believe in myself. It was something my mother couldn't do. Yours couldn't do it either. Your mother wanted you to be something, and, and if 
no matter how bad she wanted you to be it, you couldn't be it. No matter her prayers, her threats, her, her whippings, you could not be what your mama wanted you to be. Do I have any amen in here? Amen. Just because somebody wants us to be something don't mean we could be it. Even if we try, we cannot be something that we're not. Some of us are still caught between people trying to manage us and make us be something that we're not. Some of us shouldn't be mothers, but we got kids. It's almost too late because you're going to have to either mother them kids or recognize that you're not a good mother and ask for some help and explain to those kids that you are not a good mother so that at least they know why they're being treated the way they're being treated. Absent of information, we don't know. I want you to go meet to the book of Judges, chapter 6. There's a story in there. Unlike, you know, what, 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 what sparked my, my imagination about the story, we were here on movie night. I'm not going to tell you all the fun things we did and the jokes that I had because Renee, gonna, she, won't let me fr she won't let me finish preaching if I tell that joke. But but we watched the movie. It was movie night. I thought it was for the women. You know, they call to come calling me out. I said, do I look like a woman? <laughs> I mean, I know I get my nails done, my feet done, and my eyebrows done. I ain't man, I tell you. I'm still old man. And if you think I ain't, try me. <laughs> I ain't going to scratch you. I ain't going to scratch you, I promise you. But if you, if you get me in a hole, I might bite you because I'm not going to let you just take me out. But I'm, a, I'm preferably I'm going to use these on you. I, I ain't going to kick you. These are, these are my choice weapons right here. I'm a man. But I like taking care of myself. Am, am I making am I making sense? How many know it's not, it's not, there's not a problem taking care of yourself? I had to learn things. To, I had to, and, and I had to learn, you know, um, grew up in a home with, with two, with three women. No male figure, just me. And they didn't really talk to me about the things that I had to go through. So I, and, and, and especially being poor, I struggled. Do I, you might know, when you, listen, the greatest sin that, that, that I, one of the greatest sins I believe on the planet, it, it, it's not fornication, it's not adultery, it's not drug addiction. Those are a byproduct of poverty. When you poor, when you poor, you can't protect yourself because you don't even know how to protect yourself. When you poor, watch this. When you poor, most 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 people of color today struggle nutritionally because guess what? They can't afford the right food to feed themselves. Poverty has rippling effects to people of color. It's not just U.S., it's, it's all over the world. You might hear what I'm saying. And so when you grow up poor, if you don't have someone there in that house whose mind and consciousness transcend poverty, it's going to be very difficult for you to feel confident in poverty. I don't know anybody that feels good about being poor unless everybody's poor. We don't live in an environment where everybody's poor. We live in an environment where we can see poor, abject poverty. So at some point you begin to realize that these things affect how you see yourself. Look at the statistics. Listen, some of the statistics, one, two, three, four. They say every fourth black male child will spend some time incarcerated. And he will spend time incarcerated because of the environment that he's being raised in. What kind of environment he's raised in? N normally, he's raised in an environment where there's just one parent. No, no, no fault of his own. And listen, I am the byproduct of one parent, and 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 uh, we 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 made it out all right. But listen, it's a ch somebody says it's a challenge, and these challenges are systemic from years and centuries ago because of how we came into this country and how things got managed and, and so on and so on. But in the text today, the story is so profound because it speaks of a man, young man experiencing life in abject poverty. And when you're poor, you don't have any hope. 
And poverty can lead you to sell drugs, steal. Come on. You don't want to steal, but you're hungry, you steal. I remember my grandfather told me when he was younger, he said, if you're hungry, just go in the store, tell the guy you're hungry, hoping that he have some compassion on you. He said, but if you don't, go back there, get some bread, some ham meat out there and start eating. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a story we saw. <laughs> he didn't tell me that if you do that, you'll get locked up. <laughs> but that's something that he would, he would tell us, you know, that we was hungry. You know, folks had some things. Let me just... Let's read the text this morning. It's a lot of scripture. Je Je Judges chapter 6, verse 1 through, I believe, verse number 24. When you get there, say, man, I'd like you to stand if you don't mind. I ain't going to keep you here long. My giants are playing today. We'll be out of here in the next 10 minutes. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Well, Silla's going to be turning 70 years old in a couple of days, huh? 70, is that, is that right, 70? You look like you're about 48 or something like that. <laughs> she looked like she's 48 and act like she's 99. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. She's a, we thank God for God gracing you with 70 years. Amen. You show up and pray. I get to 70. I got about 10 more years before I get there, though. Somebody said, man, she that much older than he is? <laughs> Let me stop. Amen. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. And the truth of Israel did evil in the sight. No, we're starting at verse number, verse number 11. 11 to 24. Thank you. How many glad they announced to the Lord? And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was an offering that pertained unto Joash the Abzrite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of Lala. And Gideon said to him, oh, my Lord. <laughs> That's like some of us. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm blessed. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> he said, Gideon said, oh, my Lord, if God be with us, why then all has this befallen us? And where be all the miracles which our fathers told us, saying, did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? And now the Lord had forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I'll be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. He said to him, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign. I ain't stupid. Show me a sign that thou is truly talking to me. He said, depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my present and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come back. Go get me some money, and I'll wait right here. Go get me an offering. And we all, all times when we want God to do something for us, we never bring him anything. And, and for a long time, the church manipulated, made you think that it's always that money you have to bring. No, you have to bring your commitment to God. If you bring your commitment, your money will follow. He wants you to bring your heart to him. And the church manipulated people to thinking that it was all about your money. It ain't about your money. It's about your heart. And Gideon went in and made, and you got to remember, they were impoverished. So he was working with minimal supplies. Gideon went in and made ready a cake, an unleavened cake of effort of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot. 
brought it unto him under the oak and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Now take the flesh and the unleavened cakes, lay them upon this rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up a fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, at last, O Lord God, for because I've seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said to him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there, and unto the Lord called it Jehovah Shalom. And on this day, it is yet an offer of the Ebersites. So for the scripture. I'm going to preach for about 18 minutes, 18, 20 minutes on the subject. I believe in the God that believes in me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I believe in the God that believes in me. Father, have your way in this place. We thank you for the confidence that you have in us. For the apostle John said, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if he hears us, we know that we have the petition that we ask for. We ask that no one leave this place the way they came. Touch us right where we need to be touched. Cause the gospel to become alive. Manifest yourself with great strength and great glory. Break yokes sever chains and bondages give back seed to the sower and when this exercise is all said and done your name shall be glorified and these your people here youtube facebook and instagram shall be edified this and all other merits we beg in the wonderful name of jesus the christ someone say amen come on and clap your hands if you love it hallelujah very interesting piece of scripture because it reminds us so much of so much of the cycle of dysfunction that we see here in America. This could be the average young black boy, average young Hispanic boy, average young black girl, average young Hispanic girl, Asian, Indian, but someone who struggles socially or economically in the Americas. This could be him or her. And some of you know what it's like to really be without and lack, lack resources to do the basic things like taking care of yourself. Some of us in here can really go back, not, not all of you, some of y'all were spoiled, some of y'all have had it good for a long time, but some of us in here know what it's like not to have good soap to wash up in the morning. I wish I had, you know, you know, today, some of my, I only use Dove, I only use this and I only use, you know, you got all kinds of these kids look here. All we had was a bar of ivory soap. It 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 floated in the water too. It floated in the water. You knew, listen, you knew you was poor when you had soap that didn't have any fragrance in it. That's the height of poverty. But at least we were clean. But early on, we realized that, that poverty was something that we carried with us. And being poor, you recognize real early on that you lack sufficient things to get to where you need to go in life. And poverty will affect you subconsciously and affect your confidence. Do I have a witness in here? Uh, when, when, when people that, that struggle financially, it, 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 it breeds into, into a, a lack of understanding and focus. It also bleeds into education. People that are poor, it affects every aspect 
of their lives. So many of our kids today will go to school tomorrow where the education is free, but they can't seem to connect to the education because psychologically they're in a mess. They, they, they don't know who they are because of the environment they've been raised in. Oftentimes they're being raised by people that don't know who they are. So you have your parents that don't know who they are trying to raise kids that don't know who they are. And the kids wind up suffering from complexes, not realizing what their true worth is and their true value. They think they're nothing and they think they're nobody. That's why most of the black kids today you find they'll get in gangs, they'll sell drugs, they'll do anything to try to escape poverty. They'll try to escape anything that makes them look like the community that they come from. In the text this morning, which is so interesting, something like people today, Gideon finds himself coming out of hiding, trying to, 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 to secure some victuals for his family. And the Bible says he, he has been hiding because Israel had been disobedient. In the text today, when, when, when we see Gideon coming on the scene, we don't get a clear picture of why they are struggling. And I submit to you today, we need to be good purveyors of the truth of why we're in the mess we in today. I wish I had an amen here. Uh, li listen, when, when Ron DeSantis, God bless him, I'm praying for him. I did not vote for him. I don't admire him. I'm not, his, I'm not a fan of Ron DeSantis. That doesn't mean I don't hope the best for him. A anybody hear what I'm saying? But, 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 but the truth is. But the truth be told, he got in office because of, of, of voter suppression. He, he got in office because the system was rigged. Now, they're not going to say that, but, but those are the facts on the ground. Uh, uh, they made sure that they gerrymandered certain districts, and they made sure, they made sure that people that got their, felt their rights back to vote, they could not vote. So his victory was really hollow. I wish I had a... A amen in here. And, 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 so, and so sometimes people can feel a sense of despair. And I'm sure people that wanted to vote when they thought they would be able to vote, and they said, no, you can't because you ain't paid, you're, you're fine. And so now they're watching everybody enjoy the experience that everybody in America is, but they can't vote. Something like what Gideon is going through right now, experiencing hardship that he didn't cause himself. And the point I was trying to make is that we have people today that don't want us to talk about our past. They, they, they want you to forget the past. They want you to somehow take the past and, and rewrite the past and not tell the truth of the past. In the text this morning, when Gideon finally gets an encounter with God, his first conversation to God was, why is their situation the way it is. And everybody should be able to explain why the world is the way. Listen, Stacey Abrams didn't, did not win the governorship in, in Georgia. It's not because she wasn't a good candidate. Come over here. It, it's, not be, it's not because she wasn't smart. It, it's not because she was some kind of a, a left-wing nut, a communist. She, that's not why she lost the election. She lost the election because white people don't normally vote for black people. Oh, y'all don't want to talk in here. L listen, listen, listen. White people not only don't vote for us, but they don't go to our church either. Now, you ask me why, I don't know why. They'll go to your rap concert. They'll go to your boxing matches. They'll watch you shoot baskets. They'll even watch you hit a golf ball. But when it comes to church and when it comes to them sitting under you, they have a problem with that. No problem with that. And everybody knows, everybody knows that Herschel Walker is not a qualified candidate. How in the heck did he get so close to winning? Because white people, and I love them, and I'm not being racist right now. I'm talking about the world that we live in. They would rather vote for him than vote for somebody who is competent and black. Because they still see somebody black and competent as a threat to their existence. I'm just trying to talk a little bit in here. That's all. In my hearing. And, and, and so in this situation, in this situation, Gideon 
Gideon says something that's really uh, uh, very powerful. He, he, he says something in chapter 6. He says something in chapter 6 about when God says that I'm with him. And, and he says, uh, let me find the text for a minute. Give me a second. In chapter 6, in chapter 6, uh, in, in, cha in chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Give me 12 and 13 for a moment. And there came an angel of the Lord. Give it to me in NLT. In the NLT. Judges chapter 6, 11 and 12. 11 and 12. And the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree to offer it, which belonged to Joash, the clan of Abaziah. Gideon, the son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of the winepress to hide the grain. He was hiding from the Midianites. Verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Verse 13. And he said, Sir, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? So I want you to see that because what happens is, is that a lot of times we, when we look at our condition, we look at where we live at, nobody wants to tell why we why we in the boat we in. Uh, come on, walk here. Nobody wants to tell why you're in the apartment. You're in the apartment because you made a bunch of bad decisions. You're riding a hoopty because you made a bunch of bad decisions. You, you can't buy a new home because you got bad credit. You, you did. See, if we start telling people the truth, they can stop getting mad and stop blaming the government on why they're in the condition they're in. A lot of times, the, yes, the government in the terms of macro managing, has, has created an environment where we are where we're at. But, baby, let me tell you something. Sometimes you're where you are at because of the decision that you made while you were there. And so oftentimes when we, when we think about the trouble that somehow we've harnessed or somehow the trouble that we're in, we always want to point the finger at someone else. And this is what Gideon does. He said, look. If, if we're blessed, then why are we here? Why, why is the place like this? Why, why, why are they up and we down? Well, I tell you what, go to, go to chapter 6, verse 1. The answer is there. They're there because of the decisions they made. They're there because they would not obey God. They're there because they did evil in the sight of God. And not only are they there because of that, but they are consequent. When you break God's law, when you violate a, a relationship that you should honor, there are consequences to pay. And so the Bible said they did evil in the sight of the Lord. The Lord handed them over. Mom, why we can't get no new car? Shut up, girl. We're going to get one. No, just tell her you got bad credit. Just tell her you got bad credit. Just tell her, just tell her, watch this, that, that you had a boyfriend, uh -huh, walk with me somebody, who was no good, but you got a credit, you got a car for him on credit, and he never paid for it. He skipped town, and you're stuck with. Listen, there's a whole lot of reason why we're in the boat we're in, and it's a, it's a, it's a tied up web, and that stuff got to be untied. Somebody say untied. Untied and really looked at and then told the truth how you got there. So all, all, all getting is saying how we here and nobody all this time is not telling them why they're there. I need to know why I'm here. I need to know. I need to know how did we get like this. I want to know how is it that the legislature in Florida is all white and there's no black representation. How did we get here? How did we get here? And without an absence of history, I don't know. I don't know. So the first thing is that Gideon had a, had a wrong understanding about why they were there. He did, not, he did not know that there was evil that had been done. And the consequences, watch this, that they would be under the enemy's control for seven years. Because they forgot their place. They forgot their relationship. They forgot their purpose in God. He told them that there were some things that they should avoid. Is there some things that you and I should avoid? 
And guess what? Even our parents have told us as we grow up, avoid this. Avoid, and guess what? We mess with it anyway. And then when the weight of the consequences hit us, see how the enemy gets us once the consequences hit, up, hit us like it could be a child. You could have a child at a woodlock. And then you could begin to experience the, the dredgeries and the suffering of being a child with a child. And, 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 and now you could be growing up with a child, and, and she ain't looking at you like you her mama, but she looking at you like you her sister. And, and you ain't really got to the place yet where purpose has crystallized in your life yet. And so you feel just like Gideon. Where is it at? Where, where the miracles are? you? If I'm saved, and that's why some of our kids have a problem with our salvation, because you keep going to church, and we still in this Section 8 apartment. We, you keep going to church, and ain't nothing changed. We still eat this welfare cheese. You keep going to church, paying your tithe, and I don't see no change. You keep going to church, but you keep hanging out with Bobby. I see you keep, you keep going to church, but I don't see any change. Somebody said change needs to take place. And so watch this. What, what, what really, what really is, is, is enormous about the text is that I, I appreciate Gideon because I, I realize that since nobody taught me, I need God to educate me. Since my mama couldn't teach me, since my wife couldn't teach me, since, my, since, since the dog couldn't teach me, I need God to teach me. And this was Gideon. First of all, Gideon was having a conversation with God that didn't even know it was God. So when he realized it was God talking to him, he said, look, forgive me. Because poor people always walk in doubt. That's, that's, their, that's, that's, that's how you know they're poor. They doubt everything. They have no sense of hope, no sense of uh, it, things can't change things. They're, they're pessimistic. They always see the, the wrong, the bad. They don't see no good. And I'm so grateful that as poor as we was, my mother didn't allow our poverty to, to, to strangle us to our zip code. We thought outside of the box. Even though I lived in zip code 1126, baby, every now and then I thought I lived on Rodario Drive. Every, every now and then I thought I lived in Beverly Hills. Listen, you can't keep me in the ghetto. Why? Because my mind could take me anywhere. So now he's having a conversation because, see, poor people, whenever you're talking to them, they want to hear somebody that's going to give them a message of hope. And watch this. God now speaks to him like he spoke to you, like he spoke to me when we didn't have anything and there was nothing in our life that appeared that we would ever do anything of any significance. That's when he showed up in, in Gideon's life. And when he showed up, he was there stealing. He was there hiding. He was there doing something he had no business doing. And when God showed up, God said some things to him that he didn't know about himself. And I've come here to prophesy to you about who you are. You are more than a conqueror. Come on, walk, walk with me. I said you are more you are more than the sum total of all your all your frustrations, all your bad decisions. You are more I wish I had some help in here. Somebody say I'm more than my mess. Oh come on, someone say I'm more than my mess. See, if you keep looking at my mess, you'll forget that there's an anointing here. And the anointing was able to get me out of my mess. The reason that I'm anointed was so that I can go through the mess so that God can qualify me. The reason I've gone through the hell is so that God can get you to realize that you are something that he has his hand on all the time. Do I have anybody in this building this morning that realize that God had his hand on you all broke but his hand was on me high as a kite but his hand was on me drinking and driving while the police pull me over and I'm cussing like a sailor but don't realize if he would have kept me driving I would have ran into a light pole I'm thank do I have anybody in here that you're thankful every now and then God had to stop you in your tracks And 
And so Gideon, 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 Gideon says to God, okay, okay, listen. Okay, listen, if this is you, this is you, listen. I, I ain't got many more chances. This is the only chance I'm getting. I got a, I got the, I got the, I got a test for you. In verse 12, he said, this is you now. Come on. See, I'm not that smart. I ain't that educated, but I, I, I do know I can see. And so in verse 12, give me verse 12. In verse 12, he says to him, look, 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 I'm going to get this fleece, right? And I'm going to get this fleece, and, and, and I want you to see if you can make the fleece wet and then make the ground dry, then I know that was you because that's something that don't, just don't happen. There's no way that the fleece would be wet and the ground would be dry. Look what the Bible says. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not, not verse 12. Wait a minute. Look at, uh, give me one second. Give me one second. My eyes ain't as good as they used to be. Give me one second. Y'all praying for me? Yeah, look at verse 36. Look at verse 36. Verse 36, this was the fleece test. Yeah, verse 36 to verse 40. That's right. Verse 36, verse, watch what he said. Then Gideon said to God, if you are truly going to use me, come on now, don't, don't you ever have them questions? Listen, I have had question after I said, if you're going to use me, you have to give me a building. If you're going to use me, you have to fix so-and-so. If you're going to use me, I need to see some proof. Because why? When you got me, I was poor. When you got me, I had no faith. When you found me, you found a mess. So now you're asking me to do something that I don't believe I got the ability to do. And then you say you're going to be with me. I need some proof. Somebody say, I need some proof. I dare you to give your neighbor a high five. Say, neighbor, I need some proof. Well, the proof's in the pudding. Give somebody else a high five. Say, neighbor, the proof is I'm here this morning. If I came here this morning, that is the proof that God is working on my behalf. If I wasn't here in church this morning, then I could not give you any proof. The proof is that I'm here and that sooner or later, somewhere between sunrise and sunset, whatever I've been praying and asking God for, he's going to manifest it in my life. And until that time, I will yet give God the praise. Do I have a witness in here? But the Bible records in this particular text, Gideon wanted to test God. And he said, look, I'm going to put a fleece of wool on the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou will save Israel by my hand. Somebody say, I need proof. See, that's why I give God my tithes. See, when I give my tithes, he gives me proof. He opens up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing. I don't have room enough to receive. Do I have anybody that can testify that when you give, it shall be given unto you? Come on, somebody. Somebody said works only if you work it. He said, give, and it shall be given unto you in good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. That he'll cause men, somebody said men, to give unto your bosom. As I said last week, I went and got a manicure. Coming out the manicure place. Well, whenever I go there, I'm always nice to people. Come to find out when I went to, went to Jersey Mike's to get a sandwich. A lady was in the same place I was in. And when she came into place, she started testifying of how nice I am. 
how cordial I am, how friendly I am, how I'm always giving people good compliments. And when I came into place, my credit card didn't work. I spent over $20, and I told the people I had to go to my car to get a new card. When I came back to pay, to my surprise, the guy said, your bill has already been paid. I said, well, who paid it? He said, the lady that came in behind you that was bragging about you, she felt compelled to buy your food. Don't you tell me that the word won't work. Give and it shall be given unto you in good measure. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Man, let me tell you something. I have left some stuff in hotel rooms only to call back. And here they said, we got it here. Your wallet is here. Your money's here. Your rings are here. Every time I drop something, I can't lose it. You want to know why? Because greater is he that is in me. And the Bible records that Gideon told God, he said, listen, what you're asking me to do, it, 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 I, I don't have the faith for, but if you can give me a sign, somebody say, I need a sign. He said, if you can make this fleece dry up and cause the ground not to be affected, I believe. And the Bible says, in the morning, it was just like he asked. It startled him. But he's just like a lot of us. He needed just a little more help. Do I have anybody in here? You need just a little more convincing. Oh, I wish I had a... Sure would. Some of them are looking at me like they started when they got in the race. They ran fast. They wasn't like me. I stumbled. I fell. I got up. I scratched my head. I wonder if I should go back the other way. I've had some difficulties on this race, but I kept on running. Do I have a witness in here? Tell your neighbor, I kept on running. And I can appreciate Gideon this morning because every now and again, I need God to convince me that I'm in the right place with all the hell I'm going through. Do I have a witness in here? Every now and again, you'll find yourself right in the midst of a storm. And you'll question whether this is God's will for your life. Can somebody say yes, Lord? And Gideon said, I ain't going to bother you no more. But could you just do one more thing for me? He said, can you reverse what I just asked you to do? God was, I'm not a magician, Gideon, but I understand your logic. You're not going to commit to me until I commit to you. Gideon, you're not going to believe in me until I first believe in you. So, Gideon, I believe that you doubt me. So, I'm going to do what you asking me to do so that, watch this, you could believe in the God that believes in you. Somebody say, God will work with you. When God is going to use you, he'll work with you. It, it, listen, listen. In Bible college and seminary, they don't teach you worship. You don't learn worship there. You learn principles of worship, but you don't learn worship. Worship is a personal experience. There's some things you can't get in Bible college. There's some things you can't get in seminary. They can't teach you worship. You got to know how to worship him in spirit and in truth. And Gideon was expressing the brevity of his relationship with God was based on what God could show him.
because his faith would not allow him to do no more than what he could see. And so God reversed the trick. But he knew he was still dealing with somebody that still struggled. Let me tell you something. Those of us that have been beat down for all these years, we struggle with whether or not we're going to make it. Somebody shout, I'm going to make it. Oh, come on. You all make me preach. I'm going to keep you all. Somebody said, we're going to make it. Look at me. Child, I done made it. If I dropped dead tonight, I done made it. Got life insurance. I'm going to get a nice, a nice funeral. A, a big old uh, uh, stars, uh, stars and Stripes flag over my thing. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all talking about me? If I drop dead tonight, they're going to celebrate me. I wish I had a witness in here. Not that I want to go anywhere. But the God that I serve has took nothing. I used to be nothing. I was no good for nothing. He took no thing and he made something. And you think I ain't going to give the one that made no thing a something? I'm going to give him the praise. I'm going to give him the glory. I'm going to give him all the honor that he deserves. Do I have a witness in here? And now I believe. I said I believe in the God who believed first in me. The Bible says that he called Gideon. Before Gideon believed in himself, he said, Gideon, he said, Tijuana, he said, Bernadine, he said, Selah, he said, Judy, I know you're struggling. I know you don't know who you are, but the reason I'm calling your name, Renee, is because you're mighty and you're full of valor. You might be on food stamps. You might be broke. You might be in a bad marriage. But that's not who you are. You are mighty and full of glory. Do I have anybody in here? God will tell you who you are in the midst of your storm. Say yeah. Say yeah. I was in the back of a vehicle. In Panama, coming down off a cocaine high, realizing that all hell was waiting on me in Venezuela. I was a community liaison officer. I worked directly for Ambassador David Dow. My security clearance was in jeopardy. My whole world was coming down. But I called on the name. I said I called on the name of the Lord. And I like Gideon. I like Gideon. I needed some proof. I said, can you take this mess and fix it up? He said, if you give it to me, it'll never be the same. And here I stand almost 30 years ago. Mind right heart right I wish I had a witness in here because God believed in me before I believed in myself do I have a witness in here open up your mouth and give God a praise you came out of that mess you was in because God believed in you he knew you could come out of it he knew you would break the back of the enemy and give you victory Santani had his eyes on you the hell you went through because he knew you were going to come out say yeah say yeah I believe in the God that believes in me and the Bible records he said Gideon if you don't believe the enemy is yours and if you're still scared, go down to his camp. But don't go by yourself. Take your aid with you. Because faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of the Lord. And then when he went down to the camp, the enemy said, Man, these Israelis, they all over the place. They're like ants, and we're going to be defeated. 
And when Gideon heard that, he shouted, I've come to tell somebody, there's more to you than your mess. There's more to you than the money you got in your bank. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. Say yeah. Say yeah. They walked out on you. That's all right. God believes in you. They said you'll never make it. That's all right. He believes in you. And since he believes in you, I believe in the God who believes in me. Now I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. You want to know why? Because he believed in me. Great is he that is in me than he, than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ. He strengthened me. He believed me and I believe him. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. By it the elders obtained a good report. Do I have any faith walkers in here? Open up your mouth and tell your neighbor, I believe in the God that believes in me. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. I remember on my first time I preached in New York, my mother was dead. Sisters couldn't come. But my aunt said if her nephew was preaching, she was going to see it. And someone told him, can you believe that that nasty Bobby has gotten saved? She said, with God... Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, is there anything too hard for God? Say yes, yeah. say yes, yeah. say yes, yeah. say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now remember, everybody's not going to celebrate you when you first step your foot out there. But God will honor your commitment. They might try to stone you, but keep on preaching. I heard the lightning flash. I seen the thunder roar. I felt sin breaking back my soul, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus say, fight on preach on pray on praise on say yeah say yeah afraid and give you courage I remember Anna used to say oh oh I don't want to you pray for me I don't want to do it Carly just try to get her to pray and say Anna you could do it you could do it no and she would write and she would write had all these beautiful prayers and she would say no and we never gave up on her. We kept encouraging her. We kept encouraging her. Till she, she, she now has a prayer book that she wrote. She's going to get a publisher. But she now gets on the phone and prays herself. You want to know why? 
because she believes in the God that believes in her. Peter got out that boat because he believed in the God. Listen, what did I tell you faith is? Faith is believing everything that God says and everything that God is. Everything he says, everything he is. And if he says he believe in me, you can't stop me from believing in me. If he say he going to give me, he going to open up the windows, he going to do it. Why? Because I believe everything he says. He said he don't lie. So if he said he going to do something, all I got to do is stay positionally right. See, a lot of times we're not positionally right and the blessing over. It flies over our head because we're not positionally right with him. Abraham was positionally right. When the three angels of the Lord came by, he said, hey, if I found favor, don't pass. And the reason you come here is to get recalibrated. When you get off course, is to hear a word to get you back on course. When you come here to hear a word that brings conviction that you are, you're not the sum total of your, of your struggle. You are a child of God. Created in the image of God and in his likeness for divine purpose. The Bible says, for our present afflictions cannot be compared with the glory or the weight of glory that shall come. So there has to be some kind of adversity in the beginning. But know this, if God call you, he's made provisions for you. He's made a way for you. When he told Abram, listen, he said, get the child and take him to a place that I'll show you. For I want him to be a, a sacrifice unto me. He never, he never told Abraham where exactly he was going. Abraham obeyed him. He got up. And on the journey, on the third day, that's when God spoke to him. Why? Because he was positionally right. See, we want God to bless us, but we're out of position. You're out of position. Today, you're in position. You're here to hear. You can't go nowhere. You're in a dental chair this morning. What a chair to be in, boy. Especially if he ain't got no Novocaine, he's picking at your teeth. Ah! But you're here because God wants to speak directly to you. If you haven't done anything great in God, and great has nothing to do with size and buildings, it means have you, have you been an a agent of change in people's lives? And if you haven't, it's an indication that you don't believe in the God that believes in you. Because if you believe in the God that believes in you, you would be on the trail ministering to people, getting people saved, getting people delivered. Because you know what? There's a reward that's waiting for you. I do what I do because I believe in him. Because he believed in me. Or folks who say, he woke me up this morning and I was closing to my right mind. Yes, he didn't let me sleep too late. Jesus woke me up on time. He woke me up this morning, and he started me on my way. And the Lord is blessing me right now. The Lord is Blessing me right now, right now. I can feel it in his blessing just before. May not be able to see what he, what he's done for me. The Lord is blessing me right now. The Lord is blessing me. That's how you got to say it. Right now. The Lord when? Is 
When is he doing it? Right now. Right now. Right now. They say right now. Want to put those hands together if you believe you're being blessed right now. If you're here this morning and you're in a backslidden state or you need salvation, watching by Facebook, YouTube, or by Instagram, and you need to confess your sins, you want to get right with Jesus. If you're here this morning, come give me your hand and give God your heart. You want restoration? We will pray for you this morning. Is there anybody here? By letter, by Christian experience, or by baptism. Anybody? Amen. Father, we thank you for those that are saved. We release an anointing for those that are online watching. If they've said yes, God, we pray that you dispatch angels and the Holy Ghost to minister to them. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Announcement. Thank 
And we want to make sure that you've had the opportunity as well online is to give to New Life. And if you see that website, we don't want you as to miss that opportunity. So let's stretch our hands toward the offering. Father, we're just so grateful, oh God. We know that we wanted to give back to you today. You said that you only want uh, 10% and we're going to give you the 90. But, oh, God, because of so many things that we want you is to do for us in our lives, your word says, bring an offering. So, God, today we've done that. And we believe right now in the name of Jesus that every penny, every nickel, every dime that was quarter, and even the hundreds and thousands of dollars that was put in the offering today, dear God, it will be to glorify your precious name. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God some glory right now. Mm. We truly just want to acknowledge all of our visitors who are watching with us online right now. And if this is your first time, come on, New Life. Let's give those first time watchers a round of applause because truly, we are so excited about having you on today. And also, too, we had some visitors who are with us on today. If you would just please stand for us. We love having you come and worship and be a part with us on today. Young man, thank you so much. Come on, New Life. Give him a run. We are happy to have you. God bless you. Would you like to have anything to say, sir? Amen. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're so happy. And you know what? Even though we say it casually, your mom and dad could have just said, stayed at home, but they brought you to a wonderful That's place right. today. And you made that choice to say, Mom and Dad, I'm going to go in with you. So we give God the glory today, and we praise God for you. Amen, amen, amen. Now, Bishop alluded to this just a little bit earlier. Come on, young lady, you did not stand. I'm looking off that corner of that eye saying, mm-mm-mm, she didn't want to stand. Because, see, you thought I was about to go on. <laughs> We're so welcome. We're so happy to have you. You would like to have anything to say? Amen. Amen. Girl, me too. That's blessed. Well, as you can see, 
Minister Carl is not in, but let me tell you something. As you can see as well, she brought you into a wonderful place. And let me tell you something. We love on our people, and we love you. Amen. Thank you. Again, uh, Bishop has alluded to this already. Listen, we came in on Friday night, and we, come on now, those of you who said, did we not have a wonderful movie night? I would get credit for the popcorn, but let me tell you, Sister Tamika, y'all know I be getting, getting credit for everything I don't do. But I can't even take that one because let me, she came in yeah, just a little bit today. But she came in and she did an awesome job with that popcorn. <laughs> well, and you know what? Yes, she did because Chris, because oh, wow. yeah, you know what thing? Because he decided he wasn't going to be. And she, yes, but let me tell you something. You trained her well. Amen, amen. Mother just threw you under the bus. She said, we didn't need you. (laughs) (laughs) She didn't mean that. She didn't mean that. Uh, Yeah, that. You see, I had to cover that one. She really didn't. She really didn't. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, but we really did have a great time. And we prepared. What's that? (laughs) I don't know what that means. (laughs) <laughs> Don't worry about it. And as you can see and hear right now, we really did have a great time. Amen. Preparation was wonderful for everyone who came out. And if you didn't think big old sign up, movie theater, plenty of food, let me tell even you something. Even order pizza. And listen, even order pizza. And it was great. But we announced to you all to you all every first and third Friday is our women of the word. And we're excited just to have some more people. I see you back there laughing, Amber. We're excited to have some new, more new people back in our group. We're gonna be doing some wonderful things and we can't wait. Now you know I was put in charge of the books and the money. And I Well, come on, give me a hand. Just go on and do it. 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 (laughs) Amen. I mean, I tell you, I just pat old Sister T on the head, I tell you. But anyway, listen, I don't want you to get off the subject because our women of the words, we, this is our Bible time. And we take it seriously. And we do meet every first and third Friday. And again, We've had some wonderful women to come and join us. Now, some of you have given some books, and I haven't collected those monies yet. So that I don't have to come to you, you can come to me, and I am going to be here. So make sure that you're doing that. And one of the things that our Women of the Word is doing right now, we're doing our toiletry drive. And we still want every member in this church is to become a part of that where we're asking for soap, lotions, wipe, any type of sanitary supplies, toothbrush, deodorant, anything that's new, some socks that you would like, because this, is, again, is a part of our, our ministry. So we want everyone is to be a part of it. Please see me and give me your wonderful donations of the books, and we are going to be looking forward to seeing you. Boy, I can, Amber, I see your face. Girl, you are so excited. Yeah, she ready. See, that's what we like. Every woman in here, I want you to be ready like Amber, because she says she ready. You know how that goes? She ready. So let me tell you what else we're ready for. I got me a hot mama outfit. You got one too? Okay. But wait a minute. Oh, okay. Well, she, listen, Mother Geraldine says that I am not by herself. So, but anyway, we are celebrating Lady Scylla's 70th birthday celebration. It's going to be this coming Saturday, the, uh, the 19th at 7 p.m. Now, don't come at 7 p.m., you need to come before. It starts at 7, right? So we want you to be there before. Okay, starts at 7. It's going to be at Brio's in the International Mall. If you don't know the attire, we're going to be dressed in 70s. I got some cute, what color bell bottoms? Listen, be careful driving down there. We don't want the white coat guys to pick you all up. (laughs) (laughs) Think you only got in the time zone or something. (laughs) Time warp. This is 2021. You dress like it's 1950. (laughs) 
Well, we Don't want you me. all to know that we are looking to have a wonderful time <laughs> celebrating her birthday. And we know that Veterans Day passed and here up on the, uh, this past Friday night, which was on the 11th. And we still want to honor all of our veterans. And let's, we, we only have a few, and I want to specifically call their names. For the United States Army, we have uh, uh, Bishop Robert Register, U.S. Army, Sister Cecilia Register, U.S. Army, Oliver Sutton, U.S. Army, Carla Powell, U.S. Army, David Rogers, U.S. Army, Ebony Summons, U.S. Army, Gil Gilbert, U.S. Army, Marty Brown, U.S. Army, Philip Darns, U.S. Army, Active Duty, United States Air Force is William Hall, U.S. Air Force, Vallejo Fedora, U.S. Air Force, Active Duty, Fatima Tobin, U.S. Air Force Reserve. For the United States, the Marine Corps is uh, Chris Johnson, U.S. Marine. Let's give all of, our, all of them a round of applause, and we truly appreciate, and as, I would t as we hear this, uh, thank you for your service. Amen. Thank you for your service. Bishop, Sister Silla, this ends the announcement. Amen. We're going to stand for the benediction. How many glad they came out to church today? Make sure you all greet JC. She's back. We're thank so thankful God spared life. Don't hug her too hard. This is the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Our hearts and minds are clear. Till we meet again. What's the chorus? Till we meet. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. We've, we've had such a marvelous time seeing our church members, our church family. What a joy it is to see them. They haven't replaced our immediate family. We, we love them just as much. But my God, thank you that we're not lonely anymore. Thank you for the lives that have enriched our lives. As we leave this place, but never your presence, have your way in our lives. Now under him who's able to keep each of us from falling, he alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you that we believe in the God who first believed in us. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Before you leave, give somebody a big God bless you. We love you. Hit like and share. We look for you on Wednesday. God bless you. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans.